Hello guys, what's going on? Jerome here from Awesome Sauce Films. A little live commentary for you all. Figured I'd just throw out another live commentary out there for some uh, Modern Warfare 2 domination. And uh, this is part of the new thing I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be trying posting some more serious gameplays throughout the week when I don't really have too much time to go into my little funny tangents. And uh, it'll kind of give me something that I can keep me on course while uh, school commences because I'm going into senior year, a fairly busy year. I mean, some would argue junior year is more uh, exhausting and more uh, tedious. I don't know, sorry, but I can't think of the word. More, uh, it involves more hard work, I guess that'd be the right word. And it does in the end, but towards the beginning of senior year, that's really probably one of the hardest times because you got to worry about colleges, you got to maintain your grades for the first semester, then you got to just, really, just colleges and maintaining those grades is really what starts to add up. So, I mean, in all honesty, I'm going to try and do this. I figure it's a good way to keep myself busy. And, uh, yeah, so let's see how this one turns out. Now, one thing I've been toiling around with in my head that I don't really know how well it would be received is uh, to maybe do a, like on my own channel, Jerome ASF, maybe just do like a vlog of sorts. Not like, you know, I'm not, it's not going to be me talking to a camera. I'm just going to be, you know, walking around, maybe filming somewhere outside where I'm walking or maybe I'll be driving. I'll just like leave my camera on the dashboard and talk. I don't know. And uh, then I'll just talk about whatever's on my mind, really. Maybe like the day-to-day, -day, you know, daily hubbub, I don't know, just something like that. I mean, I've seen a lot of people doing it. It seems like it could be a lot of fun, and I really, I don't want to be restrained to video games in the long run, although I will, trust me, I will always stick with video games, and it'll always be my main source of videos, but I would like to kind of have a little freedom with it, you know, maybe maybe throw out a vlog every once in a while, maybe once a week, or I don't know, just figure maybe that could be fun, so tell me what you all think about that, maybe in the comments section below, or anything really. And uh, one thing I really want to clarify and just talk about is, uh, People have been saying me and Mitch are really starting to become, uh, I guess you could say, whores on YouTube for uh, likes and favors and things like that. We are not whores for likes and favors and things like that at all. In fact, if you think about it, all we say is give us an honest rating, whether it's a like or a dislike. And then people, their one argument against that is, yeah, but when you say that, you know the people are just going to like it most of the time, not going to dislike it. And that's exactly, but that's a good thing. That's, let me explain. Now, it's not like I blindly want the likes and the dislikes, but the thing is, if they are going to blindly like it like that, chances are that means they actually enjoyed the video. So yeah, when me and Mitch ask for honest ratings, we do a lot of the time expect for those honest ratings to come in the form of a like instead of a dislike. Not that we have anything wrong with the dislike, we just like the ratings as a whole. But yeah, of course we expect them to come in the form of a like. But that's not necessarily a whorish thing to do. If you genuinely like the video, then it shouldn't be out of our way to say, hey, do something, give us an honest rating, or you genuinely dislike the video, it's not like we're going out of our way, you know, we're saying, like, hey, you know, you watched the video, you disliked it or you liked it, tell us which one it is. I mean, I don't know, people sometimes take it out of context, and people really, they start analyzing a little bit, and they see what some people are doing, like, White Boy 7th Street is probably one of the biggest perpetrators of that, and they see people like him, and they think that we're becoming him, and it's, it's nothing of the sort. We really honestly are just looking for those honest ratings, and it really does benefit us in the end. It lets us know we're doing something right, it lets us know we're doing something wrong, and um, on those rare occasions, if it gets enough likes that it actually gets to the main page, I mean, you know, but that's not, that's not a goal. That's just like something like in the rare occasion it does. But, you know, I mean, just, it really does help out a lot. And as for people going, uh, saying that me and Mitch are asking for a lot of favors and things, I've never once asked for a favorite in a video. Mitch asks them on his master quest with good reason. When he says he wants a favorite, the 500 favorite system, he asks for 500 favorites because, not because he wants the, like, the whore or anything like that around with the views and things like that, no. Because, and generally, when you favorite the video, it'll get it more views because people will see you favorited it, and then it'll send out to your subscribers or your friends, and people will be like, hey, look at that, and they'll click it. Now, at first, it seems like, oh, he just wants more views, more money. No, what he wants the money for is because he's running a thing for you guys with the badges. Like, I know he's clarified this before, but people still consistently try and bash him for it. He's trying to do something nice for you guys. He's trying to run a thing where he's going to give out 500-plus badges. And to do that, yeah, it's not to get into, like, the whole money thing, but it's, it's going to cost money. That's why he really wants those favorites and likes, because it'll get the word out about his series, help it get more views, and in the long run, it'll help him pay for something that he's doing for you guys so in all honesty I don't think you guys should really take that out of context as well but uh, enough ranting about the whole likes and favorites things I just thought I should get that off my chest because I always see people doing it so let's talk about some other things um, primarily I guess would be games coming out in the future I left off on one of my other commentaries like 
just kind of dry on saying that Battlefield 3 is coming out, Gears of War 3 is coming out, Modern Warfare 3 is coming out. Gave my opinions about Modern Warfare 3, but didn't really go into Gears 3 and things like that. And uh, I am genuinely excited for Gears of War 3. Not just because it's like crazy, insane killing people, but mostly because it's crazy, insane killing people with a chainsaw. So yeah, there's the difference. Now, I, I know you guys might not get that, but um, me and my friends, when we used to play Gears of War 2, we, basically the story is me and my friends quit Gears of War 2 after like a month or so, then a couple months later we decided to go back for fun, and we found it amazingly fun if you only use the character Cole and you only chainsaw it. It's actually a lot of fun. It just it gives you a little goal, and it kind of just bands everyone together in like a common a common little fun thing, and it just it gets you going. And it, it's a lot of fun if you're playing with a group of friends to so really just only chainsaw. It's, it, it gets that's entertaining, but um, you know the thing is, is that Gears of War 2 after that, after a while, did get boring and people started shifting back and forth. So I'm very happy to hear that Gears of War 3 is coming out soon. And uh, after playing the beta, I'm satisfied with the fact that although they may have depowered the chainsaw a little bit, it seems like it still can work its magic. And I don't know. See, that's the thing with Gears of War against a lot of other games like Call of Duty. And don't get me wrong, you can have like you know crazy fun in Call of Duty and things. But I feel like games like Gears of War, it's a lot easier to have that kind of crazy fun. And, I mean, some people it's not what you're looking for, but for people like me, and that is what you're looking for, then damn, you probably can't wait for uh, Gears of War 3, I'll tell you, because that's going to be quite the gold mine for just crazy stupid fun. But, um, holy shit, I'm on a six kill streak now. Oh my god. This is badass. Most of you are like, wow, that's not good, Jerome. But I'll be like, no, this is amazing! Oh god, he stole my kill. No, because I'm running the Predator Missile, uh, Pavlo, uh, Chopper Gunner. Uh, I should have probably ran the Pavlo and the uh, Chopper Gunner and then the Nuke because, I mean, in all honesty, the Predator Missile only picks me up like one to two kills, but ah, I never go and then I die. So that's a problem. The thing is, I never really get to that point. You know, I've only gotten one Nuke in my entire Modern Warfare 2 career, and it was like a year and a half ago. I was so happy. I was like, yes, yes, because it was one of the first times I ever tried going for a Nuke. And then every other time I tried going for the nuke, just it didn't happen. It was just kind of like a, a common case of beginner's luck. It was on favela, picked up seven kills, hid in the shower area on that, like, you know, on favela, used my harrier, that picked me up enough kills for my chopper gunner, used the chopper gunner, and the rest is history. I literally just picked up seven lucky kills and hid in a shower. <laughs> So, don't go around thinking that I was really good because it was on Favela. It honestly was just, it was just beginner's luck, and it was, it was cheap, I'll admit. I, I was camping, but I was, I was hyped up about it. Everyone wants to get their first nuke on Call of Duty. And this was, like, a couple months after the game came out, so I was all, like, on it. I was like, yeah, this is, this is it, man. But, you know, that's just how things roll. But I have to admit, though, I was a little, even though I'm not very good at getting it, I always find it fun having the goal of going for a nuke. And uh, I'm kind of disappointed that they're taking it out of uh, Modern Warfare 3. And also, even though I couldn't get it, it was always fun to kind of play with those really good friends of yours that could get the nuke, and to try and help them out, be like, yeah, can you just, like, cover me here while I call my, like, I don't know, chopper gunner, and just helping them get the nuke. It's always fun to just try and help your teammates get the nuke, and I don't know, I just, I, I thought it was a fun, common goal you guys could achieve besides going for the actual win. And uh, they took it out of Modern Warfare 3, which... I don't know, I'm, I'm, a little, I'm a little disappointed with, because I see the reasoning behind it, they didn't want nuke boosters and things, but for the most part, <clears throat> nuke boosters, they aren't really that big a deal in the Call of Duty universe anymore, especially because, I mean, they were a big deal at first, but people really have to realize that they can just simply go search on the map, and it's not that hard to find people. Generally, the people that are boosting are not the people that are like HLG. I will admit, I don't blame you if you can't find the guy because he's in like a super HLG spot that like you just can't find, and it's like, okay. But a lot of the times, I'm telling you, they aren't in complicated spots. They'll literally be like behind a bush, and you're like, wow, why didn't I check there? And to be honest with you, I can't answer that question for you why you didn't check there. Uh... <laughs> But the point is that I, I understand the reasoning behind it. I just I don't think it's a good enough reason. I, I think they should have kept it in. I think I think it was a lot of fun. But uh, I was checking into some of the other kill streaks, and one thing I guess that's cool that uh, I guess it's a cool thing that they put in there. I guess a nice replacement is now I don't remember the name of it, but essentially it was a it was a plane that shot out five Predator missiles or something like that. And uh, I was reading up on that, and I'm like, wow, that seems that seems really intense and cool. I mean, I can see myself using that a lot. Like. Just think, oh, there's a chopper gunner and care package that just got taken. But, uh, you know, I could see myself using that a lot. And I could see it being very, very beneficial, very cheap. I can imagine playing on Search and Destroy. You get pissed off if the other team got one of those. But if I remember correctly, it was like a 10-kill streak. It was something that it, it isn't going to happen in Search. 
But um, it seems it can be a very effective kill streak if you were playing like Ground War or something. So I don't know. We'll see where that one leads us, but hopefully in the uh, general direction of good things. And uh, looks like we're running low on time here. But I guess to close it up, I'd just like to say that if you guys could go over to my side channel, Jerome ASF, and check it out, I have some cool video series going up there, including a Kingdom for Kepling series I've been doing with Matt and Mitch. And if you could all subscribe there if you like the content or just. Just watch it, you know what I mean? I don't know. Just maybe you'll find something you like. I'm not I'm not asking to commit, just saying go watch it, go check out my another channel, Jerome ASF. And uh, thank you all for watching. I hope you have a good night. Thank you.